Hey everybody, welcome to today's update on Daily IoT. On today's episode, we've got a problem with the printed circuit board and it looks like we're gonna need to do a, a PCB rev, do a little bit of rework on uh, the layout and some things which uh, I'm not really excited about, but this is totally my fault um, due to the original schematic that I turned over to Agility Design. And so I wanna talk a little bit about that and why it sucks. So as part of the project, the, the puck is gonna be asleep most of the time, like 98 or 99% of the time, it's sleeping. The only time it's gonna wake up is when it needs to fetch updated stats for whatever player or team that it needs to get them for. And so it will be in deep sleep mode most of the time. And so um, every time it gets an update, it will say, when's the next time I should check in? It will get that information, store it, go to sleep for that amount of time, and then wake up. All of that working just fine. And um, so no problems there. Where we run into a problem is if somebody needs to plug the puck in to their USB port to do some sort of debug or figure things out or configuration. Because again, this thing will not wake up unless it's told to, whether that's from the deep sleep timer or for some external interrupt. And so what I was hoping to do was there's a little, uh, I, I talked about this before, P good from the charge circuit comes and connects to the P1 module. And I, what I was hoping was that that signal when it changes could wake the P1 up from deep sleep. Turns out that that is not possible. So the, the P1 can be woken from normal sleep mode by any number of interrupts that are on here that you can set using the attach interrupt stuff in the code. And so I could put this thing into normal sleep mode and then wake it up with the P good signal. That's fine. However, deep sleep mode can only be um, exited from uh, on the timeout from the timer that you set or from a rising edge signal on the wake up pin. And I have nothing connected to the wake up pin. And I knew this before I did the schematic and sent it over to Agility. I knew that piece of information. I wrote it in my Trello board of like, hey, you need to do this to wake it up from deep sleep. And I completely spaced it. And so they had no idea that I needed that to be in place. And so I was over the weekend testing waking from deep sleep and came to this realization that I cannot wake it up from deep sleep with the P good output from the uh, power block. And so why is that a big deal? Well, um, I could still go into sleep mode and wake up using that, um, that P good signal. However, the power usage in those two modes is very different. So in deep sleep mode, the data sheet lists the P1 drawing about 80 microamps of current, uh, which is pretty low. However, in sleep mode, it's one to two milliamps. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but it's about, you know, given those two numbers, it's, it's about 10, 10 or 12, 13 times more current than I'm drawing in deep sleep mode. And that becomes a big problem because again, this thing is sleeping all the time. So instead of drawing 80 microamps, you know, 23 hours and 59 minutes and, 58 seconds a day, it's gonna be drawing one to two milliamps during that time. And so that's gonna kill my battery life. Now, I don't think that that would be too bad. That would mean people would have to charge more often, but that's really part of the experience that I'm going for is that this is not something that you have to charge every week to continue to get stats. It really should just sit there and you shouldn't have to think about it a lot until you have to charge it maybe a couple times a season. And so as far as a feature performance, perspective, everything is working and I could probably get away with the as it is designed. And um, I've thought about some things about maybe going into deep sleep mode for like 10 seconds, waking up, checking the P good to see if somebody's connected um, and then going back to sleep. I might be able to do something like that. I'd need to hook up my microcurrent and do some current profiling to see what kind of battery um, implications that that would have. But um, the right thing to do is to fix the PCB revision. However, some other things to consider here. The lead time on all this stuff, I gotta get, now I've gotta get some PCB rework done, and then I have to have some more PCBs fabbed. So I gotta do another prototype run of five, basically, with this new change. Make sure everything looks good and still, all the things that work now still work, and that the new thing that uh, creates that rising edge signal on the wake up pin works now. And so that, that pushes my timeline out a bunch. And we're getting close up to hockey season here. Um, and again, lots of firmware to write. And so 
uh, it might be worth doing a little bit of research to see if I could do some deep sleep trickery um, with the current revision of the hardware and still get, you know, if I could still get 90% of my expected battery life by doing that, I might be okay to just move forward with my run of 100 to get those, do my market tests, things like that, and then revision two, which would be any units that I produce after that batch of 100, would have the fix on it so that um, you know battery life would be much improved. But um, I still feel uh, this is one of those, if you've got the product guys like, no, it's good enough, do those things and ship it, versus the technical side that's like, I know it could be better, I know what's wrong with it now before I've even shipped any units, I should, fix it and some of the data is going to tell me that like if it's i don't feel like this would be the case but if it's like i get 98 percent of what i expect by doing some sleep you know bounce trickery um then maybe i would feel better about doing that because it's really close and you're at a statistical you know um error of whether the battery is going to last as long as it did before and so um those are things I'm thinking about. Right now I'm leaning towards PCB rev, get them done, pay the money to get them done faster turnaround so that I can prove these features out and get it uh, you know, closer to that run of 100. So just some, some roadblocks that I'm hitting. Um, it, it really, when I found out and I realized this, uh, it sucks so much, but you know, the flip side of that is I'm, I'm having so much fun doing all this, like going through the, like having these problems happen. This is all stuff I'm learning, you know, measure twice cut once i said that last time well this is one thing that i really should have extra reviewed before i sent it over to agility totally my fault on this and so uh, that's the update question of the day if you've done any sort of product work uh what's the most expensive mistake you've ever made and not even product like maybe you shorted out your 400 hundred dollar multimeter or something tell me about an expensive mistake that you've made doing your own project stick it in the comments below would love to hear from you otherwise thanks so much for watching daily iot the show where together we're learning how to make the internet of things one day at a time